This here is the Morphine M1K, a computer stick that I think is worth a look, and perhaps even replace your low-power PC at home. So I'll run through everything you need to know about this stick, do some benchmarks, how it might perform as a Plex server, and even run some games. So there was a time where Intel sold a device slightly larger than a USB stick that you can plug directly into a monitor and use as a PC. It originally featured a 4-core Atom processor, and they also released high-performance variants with the Core M3 and M5. But back in June 2020, that Intel Compute stick line was discontinued, and that was the end of the stick PC. But they were all of them deceived. For more PC sticks were made. In the land of China, in the industrial areas of Shenzhen, the factories forged not in secret many more stick PC variants to share with all others. Okay, I don't have the production budget to do a full Lord of the Rings prologue parody, but you get my point. So here's what you get in the box. I just thought that I'll also mention that whilst I was told that this unit is Morphine branded, nowhere on the box or unit does it say that, and I believe the design is manufactured generically, and these Chinese distributors regularly just slap on their own brand as they wish. So here's the stick. You get an AC adapter with a barrel plug, a manual, and a short HDMI cable. That AC adapter is a 12 volt 2 amp, which suggests it does do 24 watts. I've got an AU adapter with mine, as the seller didn't have a native Aussie brick. Now having a closer look at this stick, it is actually bigger than expected compared to the pictures online, so for the guys watching out there, always look at the dimensions. So I'll put its exact dimensions and its weight up on screen, but here it is side by side with some average sized USB sticks and an iPhone 13. So as you can tell, it will cause some HDMI port clearance issues if you plug it directly into a monitor or TV, hence the HDMI cable that comes in the box. The unit is finished in matte plastic with ventilation. The plastic doesn't seem to pick up any fingerprints, which is great. And they've slapped on the Intel logo just next to the power button. Cool. In regards to cooling though, the ventilation might give you the impression it's passively cooled. It actually has a small fan and heat sink inside. I'll give you a sound sample later on so you can get an idea of what sort of noise it generates. Over on the side, you get two USB 3.0 ports and on the other side, a micro SD slot. Over the back side, you get some details on the unit. This stick has the Intel Celeron N4100 with a base frequency of 1.1 GHz and turbos up to 2.4 GHz. It has four cores and a six watt TDP. It comes with four gigabytes of RAM and 64 gigabytes of eMMC storage. With this unit, you also get AC Wi-Fi and Bluetooth 4.2, which is fantastic. Just some general comments on that CPU. If you know the very popular J4125, this is gonna be slightly slower due to the TDP. The N4100 is six watts and the J4125 is 10 watts. Otherwise, the architecture is the same. So how did it go with day-to-day -day use? Admirably, I must say. That N4100 quad core is quite snappy when using it for general browsing, video watching, and some light office work. It's gonna do a good enough job. What is a slight let down is that four gigabytes of RAM. You're gonna saturate that real fast with a bunch of Chrome tabs open. So you gotta be aware of not going too hard on the multitasking. Though fret not, even with a few apps open and a bunch of Chrome tabs, Windows 10 was able to allocate resources relatively efficiently. Now that unit has eMMC storage, which is most commonly quite slow, but this is eMMC 5.1. And what that means is it's actually hugely faster IOPS compared to older eMMC standards. So what that means in real world speeds, check out the Crystal Dismark benchmark. These speeds are similar to what you would get from a SATA 2 based SSD. And whilst not as quick as the latest stuff, it does explain why I've had a quick and responsive experience using this PC. And I'm quite impressed by that. Also, I've tested some external hard drives to see if the system can handle them. A four terabyte unpowered portable drive works fine, and so does a powered eight terabyte external unit. Okay, so I've run Cinebench R20 to give you an idea of CPU performance and some comparatives. And okay, it's gonna take a while. Let's just jump to the answer. And what to score 544, which is pretty rubbish. Now, for context, the performance of this is roughly Intel Core 2 Quad 6600 from 2007. Okay, some people like myself run a Homeplex media server, so I've done some tests to see its transcoding abilities. Not doing anything fancy, I've got three HEVC copies of the movie Tenet, which for copyright reasons, I'm not gonna show any footage of. One copy is 4K HDR10 28.4 megabit rate. I've also got another copy, which is 4K HDR10 4.2 megabit. And lastly, a 1080p 3.5 megabit file. I've turned on hardware transcoding and accessed the server via Chrome browser on various devices. Chrome doesn't support HEVC and will transcode it to 264. Also, I'm using a gigabit ethernet to not be bottlenecked by Wi-Fi. So I haven't seen others do this sort of testing and I wouldn't regard myself as a Plex expert. So please comment below if you think that the test methodology should be different. 
All right, no chance of the 4K files. Hit about 100% CPU usage and constant buffering stutters. 1080p transcodes nicely just with one stream, but as you can tell, CPU usage spikes up to 100%. As I thought, starting another stream results in intermittent buffering. So if you have people accessing a Plex server and most of your media is in HEVC and regularly transcode, then this might not be for you. So now you might be wondering, what games can you run off this thing? Well, I didn't expect much, and that didn't stop me from trying. So older titles like Left 4 Dead 2 ran at under 60 frames per second at 720p. It was a game that I loved back when I was in university, but in terms of gameplay, it's really starting to show its age. Trying to step it up to a more recent zombie shooter like World War Z, lowest res I can get is 720p, and it's just not playable. I gave CSGO a shot, running at 600p resolution, and the performance on it brings me back to when I was 11 years old, running what would have been CS version 1.2 on a 400MHz Celeron. You merely adopted the lag, I was born in it. And while I would call FPS in the low 20s barely playable, You must be truly desperate. Last game I've tested is Dota 2, a 600p resolution and detail set to low of course, and it was a very similar experience to CSGO. FPS in the low 20s, which is sort of playable considering it's not as intensive as an FPS game, but probably not recommended. Okay, one very last game, Call of Duty Warzone. Oh wow, look at that FPS, what a beast of a PC. Okay, I'm kidding. I'm just testing cloud gaming using Parsec, and what do you know, it works great. AAA titles on a potato. Temps never exceeded 75 degrees Celsius when running Cinebench back to back. At full bore, the fan is not crazy loud as it's only so big, but the sound on it is quite high pitched, which is like a not so loud vacuum cleaner if you ask me. From about 50 centimeters away, it was about 33 decibels. Power draw from the wall was about five and a half watts at idle and a measly 13 watts when running Cinebench. In other words, it uses as much power as an LED light bulb. What a time to be alive. Okay, so that was the M1K compute stick. My overall thoughts, well, I didn't mention the price until now, but this unit cost me 250 Aussie dollars locally, but can be had off AliExpress for under 120 USD. There is also a more upspec version with the J4125, 8 gigabytes of RAM and 120 gigabytes storage for an extra 25 USD, which will get you slightly better performance, but it's a hard pass for me because I think with its current specs, it's more than enough for what I needed to do. At its $120 price tag, I do like it a lot, and I think a lot of people will too, provided they temper their expectations with the unit. For the casual user who just needs to read their emails, watch a few videos, browse some sites, this is gonna be perfect. Alternatively, this could also be used as a Plex server. Plug in a large capacity powered USB drive and you're off to the races. Although I didn't test it, the unit is compatible with Linux and I'm thinking there's probably a distro out there that might be more suited for this unit if you plan to use it as a media PC plugged into your TV, given that I don't think Windows is the right interface for that. If I was to do some traveling, I'd probably bring it along and even remotely connect my PC at home if I wanted to play some games. So it definitely suits somebody who's constantly on the move. There is a ton you can do. Now, if you're a power user or a heavy multitasker, this thing is gonna leave you underwhelmed because by today's standards, the CPU is pretty average. Same can be said if you're intending to use it for a lot of video transcoding. As mentioned, it was only able to transcode one 1080p HEVC stream, so that's a no-go. Otherwise, I do have more mini PCs, some in stick form similar to this that I'm gonna review, so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss it, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.